Check the description for the following discount codes. I spent the morning today having a little play around with the 120 Hertz wireless mode, so Air Link mode on my Quest 2 today. Um, it, it comes with, yeah, let's start from the beginning. It comes with version 29 software update. So you need to have that in the first place. Let's, let's just show you how to enable it to begin with and then I'll tell you what I think about it uh, and what it's like to use. So let me just get some screen capture on the go. Yeah, good. So load up your Oculus software. I'm sure you all know how to do that. Go down to devices at the bottom here, click on your Quest 2, and then scroll down here on the right hand side to where it says graphics preferences. At the moment, mine's set to 80 hertz and the render resolution 4224 by 2128. Click on that and now you'll see we have 120 hertz available here, whereas before we only had up to 90. So you enable it here, um, I actually can't remember whether you need to enable it on the Quest first or not. But the Quest, to enable it on the Quest, all you do is click, put the Quest on, click settings, experimental features, and tick 120 hertz. That's all there is to it. So turn it on, settings, experimental features, 120 hertz. You may have to do that before you do what we're doing here on the PC, but you can try it either way and you'll soon see. Um, but yeah, you tick 120 hertz. Now, your rendering resolution, I advise you to put it all the way down to one, at least in the beginning. Um, my graphics card is an RTX 2080. My CPU is a 3800X. I have 32 gig of RAM and a fast NVMe drive. So the computer by today's standards is now really only middle of the range, you might say, because a 3070 or possibly even a 3060 performs as well as what my card in here does. Um, and you know anybody with a 3080 or a 3090, and this goes for the, the CPUs as well, any of the 5000 series CPUs, almost any of them perform equal to or better than what mine does. So annoyingly, you know, what, what was a high spec PC is now very much middle of the road. But yeah, for me, and anyone running a similar spec, put that render resolution down to one to begin with, because as anyone with any common sense knows, leaping from 90 hertz to 120 hertz, or maybe you were running 80 hertz before, possibly even 72, is such a huge increase in GPU load. It's incredible. Um, you know, if you were going from 72 up to 120, you're getting on for almost doubling, you know, the load as far as sort of FPS goes. So yeah, stick it, stick it at one and just have a little play around. And this is what I've been doing all morning today in, might as well turn your screen capture off. Obviously you just click save and restart at that point. Um, and this is where you would come back to, to play around with your render resolution. In fact, I'm just gonna cancel it because I'm leaving it on 80 Hertz and 4224 by 2128. This is what runs nicest for me with my setup. Um, yeah, let me just stop the screen capture. So yeah, all morning I've been playing around with this in different games, different experiences, different sim titles, 120 hertz, putting the resolution down, putting the resolution up, playing with the in-game graphics quality settings. And annoyingly, it's just too much for my spec. Apart from the Oculus Home, I can't really run anything, and maybe Beat Saber, I can't really run anything at 120 hertz and this is obviously PC VR over AirLink we're talking about here. Um, yeah, I can't really run anything at 120 hertz with the render resolution up, you know, beyond about one, and with the in-game graphics, you know, it's almost a trade-off. I can, I can bump the render resolution a bit, but then I have to turn the quality settings down in the games, or I can have the quality settings up in the games and turn the render resolution down. And in some games, can't do it at all. Medal of Honor, for example, just ran like a bag of poo. I couldn't run it at 120 hertz, no matter how low I turned the settings down in game and even with the render resolution at 1.0, um, you know, in the Oculus software. And, you know, with, with those render resolutions down, with the in-game settings down, it just looks horrible. 
you know, I'd, I'd like to be able to comment on how the air link compression has affected the visual quality by throwing those extra, you know, frames in there going from 90 to 120. But to be honest, having to turn the settings down, the render resolution down, and the in-game settings down as low as I did to hold 120 hertz, you couldn't tell what the, what the compression was doing anyway because it just looked a blurry, blocky, jagged mess. So <laughs> for me, right now with my spec, as I still can't get my hands on a, a new graphics card, for me, the 120 hertz is, is nice in the Oculus Home, <laughs> um, but you know that's, that's really all I can use it for. I can't play any games at any sort of visual fidelity acceptable level that I'd be happy with. I'm having to settle on sort of 80 or 90 hertz, depending on the title. And then, you know, a render resolution of sort of, well, what you saw there, 4224 by 2128, which I think is like 1.3-ish on the slider. Um, and then being able to have the graphics, in-game graphics settings up on either, you know, medium or high. And for sim racing titles, this is even worse than normal VR titles. You know, we all know sim racing titles are not the best optimised for VR. So it's just not something I can do with my hardware. If some of you out there have got a 3090 or a 3080 and you want to share your experiences below in the comments, I'd like to hear from you, you know. And if you can, share all your settings. So, you know, pick a title, maybe Dirt Rally or or a VR title, you know, um, Zero Calibre or, or um, Medal of Honor or something, and just tell me what render resolution you're running, what your refresh rate is, and what your in-game settings are. And for those of you that can use 120 hertz, this is. I'm interested to see whether with something like a 3090 or a 3080, you can actually run a high render resolution and a high refresh rate, 120 hertz, and actually be able to run your in-game graphics on sort of a high level as well. Or if we're gonna to have to wait, you know, for the next generation of graphics cards. And this is the thing about, we've got that chicken and egg scenario, haven't we? Do you want a high resolution, high refresh rate headset like this or like the, um, the Vive Pro 2, which is even higher resolution uh, and that also does 120 Hertz? Or, um, or do you want the graphics cards to come out first that can run them? Like, you've got to have one before the other, haven't you? And in my current situation, and I think for a lot of us, because we can't get new graphics cards, we, we, we've got headsets that will do a really high res and a really high refresh rate, um, but we've got nothing to power them with. And again, credit to Facebook, Oculus, for enabling 120 hertz on the Quest 2. You know, for £299, still the best value VR headset on the market, in my opinion. Not the best VR headset, it has its drawbacks. At the moment, I don't think there really is a best VR headset in, in the sort of normal consumer space. They all have their pros and cons. But when it comes to value, you can't beat a Quest 2. And there's an all-round package, you know, sort of plug-and-play style VR for new VR users. Definitely still a good shout, I think. But... um yeah, I think that's that's really all I can say about it. It's great to have the option there, and I look forward to at some point upgrading my GPU and perhaps my CPU, and then really being able to make use of that 120 hertz. But I think for probably the majority of us, because it will only be a small part of the VR market that's running 3090s and 5000 series CPUs, um, I think for the majority of us, we're still gonna be sticking to our 80 or 90 hertz, you know, with a sharpish resolution, you know, and fairly high in-game settings. But that's been my experience with it today. I just thought I'd share it with you in case any of you wondered, or, you know, in case any of you have got a similar setup to me and you're wondering, oh, why can't I run 120 hertz? Well, it's not just you, it's gonna be all of us. So as always, thank you very much and take it easy.